Okay, so I've had to do a couple takes on this one. Let's see if I can finally get this right. Uh, this is going to be on electrolytes. I've had a couple people asking about, you know, basically how do we know if they're strong or weak? Okay. The entire point here uh, between strong and weak is we're basically trying to gauge how many... Um, how many ions do we have? So how many cations, how many anions do we have floating around in a solution, all right? So, um, you know, there, there are going to be some basic premises, but, you know, what do we mean by that? Well, let's say we have a solution kind of in a cup, okay? So here's our mystery solution. All right, we've got, you know, maybe we've got some kind of thing throwing energy into this solution, all right? And on the other hand, we've got a light bulb, Okay. So if we have if we have basically a strong electrolyte into in this solution here, all right, uh, what we're going to see is that well that electricity is going to pass between all those different ions, and more of it is actually going to get to this light bulb. So this light bulb will will shine really bright, okay. But if we have a weak electrolyte, we're not going to have as many ions out there, okay. We're going to have you know some parts that are still kind of clumped together, and, and, and some of it is going to be in ions, okay? So we'll, we'll basically show that it's a reversible kind of thing. You're going to have, like, for example, if you have x, y turning into x and, and y over here, all right? What, what you're really seeing is that not all of this x, y solution is turning into x ions and y ions over here. Instead, you know, you have some of them are x, y, some of them are x, and some of them are y, okay? And in, in the case of a strong, um, in the case of a strong uh, electrolyte, though, if I, if I had some kind of x, y here, I'm going to draw one arrow that points in one direction. It's just going to break up into its, into its constituent ions like that. Oh, wait, there's a shine there, isn't there? I'm trying to block that light. Uh, I'm not going to ever block that light, but just, just trust me that in here, actually, I can move it down. There you go. We've got an X, Y there, <laughs> all right? Uh, we're just going to have to deal with that glare. I'm just going to have to remember that there's a glare there. Uh, anyway, so we should basically be asking ourselves a sec, you know, kind of, we should be asking ourselves questions as we're going through this, okay? So if I were to throw out a random uh, compound out there, okay? So this is NaCl. This is table salt, all right? For this one, if we were to put it into water, okay, it would actually break up into Na plus and our Cl minuses, right? So these are both aqueous, but I'm not not going to worry about that right now, okay? Uh, it, but it's not; these are not going to reconstitute themselves back into NaCl. So this is this is going to be a one-way reaction, okay? So you're going to see this completely, completely is a keyword split up into its ions, okay? Because it's completely split up into ions. Well, if I have NaCl solution here, all I'm really going to have is Na plus and Cl minus, all right? And you're going to see that like a lot of that go right through, okay? So this is a strong uh, electrolyte. But the way that we know it'll do this, the first step of knowing is, the first question you should be asking is, is this ionic? Okay? Because if yes, then it is going to be strong. No matter what. I mean, I'm, I'm going to say that now and just watch somebody disprove me. All right. But yeah, if you see an ionic compound like NaCl, all right, you know it's a strong. And I mean, how do you identify ion, an ionic compound? Typically, you're going to have a metal and you're going to have that bind to a non-metal. All right. Because you're going to have your metals turn into your cations. Okay. Uh, which have positive energy. I like to think of this by thinking, okay, my cat fills me with positive energy. I know it's stupid, but that's just how I remember it, all right? Uh, but a non-metal is going to make an anion, right? It's going to create a negatively charged particle, okay? And in water, these will break apart, and they will turn ba basically completely into their uh, constituent ions, and for that reason, and I hate that glare, um, for that reason, this is going to be a strong electrolyte, okay? So if it's an ionic, yes, it is, it is going to be strong, okay? Let's see if I can dodge that glare still. This is turning out to be a real pain. Uh, let me try to mark that dot so I know exactly where this is in the camera. All right, well, if it's not ionic, then what? Well, we know it's molecular, right? Now, among our molecular compounds, we have acids and bases. Okay, uh, if, if we're using basically, I believe it's the Aarhus or Aarhus, something like that, the definition of of this particular acid uh, or base, what we're basically saying is that it might be a bronze. I, you know, to be honest with you, I should I should just know that, but I don't because, yeah. Um, 
So let's just say, actually, let me just look this up real quick. <laughs> Jeez, I cannot find anything today. I believe it's actually forwarding the sections. Okay, so if we're actually looking at, you know, in this case, I'm just going to use the Bronsted definition, okay? The Bronsted definition is going to say that acids here are a proton donor, all right? Bases are going to be a proton acceptor, all right? So if I had, you know, this H proton here and it was sent off by... X, okay? This is going to be my Bronsted acid. If that H plus then binds, let's say, to, you know, something else, like let's say this is an amine group, okay? It's going to attach over here, okay? Uh, this is a proton acceptor, okay? And this is, of course, bound to some kind of Y group, you know, whatever. Uh, this is an acceptor, so that's going to be a Bronsted base, okay? So it's the difference is basically one's giving it away, the other's taking it, okay? Um, but... You should be asking yourself, okay, well, if this is molecular, is it an acid or a base, or is it, well, is it not? Okay. Uh, but there are two parts of this as well. Is it a strong acid or base? Or is it a weak acid or base? Okay. Now, unfortunately, if you really want to go into this, you're going to have to memorize what your strong bases and your strong acids are. Okay. I, po I posted one video already on how to memorize the strong acids. I mean, the strong bases are, are for the most part, I mean, they're going to be your group one or some of the group twos, most of the group ones, uh, but linked to a hydroxide group. Okay. So like, for example, lithium, hydroxide is going to be a strong base, okay? Uh, you're going to have, you know, NaOH is another strong base. These are all in group one, okay? But in group two, you're going to have, I guess, I believe it's CaOH2, right? We need two of these OHs because Ca has a, a plus two charge, okay? So these are all going to be your strong bases. You're just going to have to memorize that. Uh, the chart that I've been using is on page 316, or sorry, on page 318, okay? Uh, and it basically weeks, uh, it basically shows all the strong acids and the strong bases, okay? But if you have a strong acid, okay, so let's say we don't have an ionic compound. Let's say instead we've got a, you know, we've got something like HCl, okay? Well, we know HCl is, a, a, is an acid, okay? This is hydrochloric acid, all right? But, um, you know, how do, it's, it's strong because the book says so. All right, uh, but this will break up completely into H protons and Cl minus uh, anions. Okay, um, so that's going to be your strong acids. All right. Likewise, something like CaOH uh, two is going to break up into Ca two plus, as well as it's going to break up into two OH negatives. Okay, so you know that's basically going to be your strong acids, strong bases. Both of them, as you can imagine, are going to be strong electrolytes. Okay, so they will conduct electricity very, very well. Okay, um, your your weak acids and your and your weak bases are going to be every other acid and base out there, okay? So, uh, for example, if you've memorized the chart, you're not going to see phosphoric acid on that chart, okay? So, because it's not on the chart, you know, phosphoric acid is going to be a weak acid, okay? So, you know, basically just take it with a, a, a bit of salt, but that, that's how I've been doing it, okay? But if it's not strong, if it's not a strong acid, if it's not a, a strong base, uh, if it's a weak acid or a weak base, it's going to be a weak electrolyte, okay? You should basically be seeing a correlation here, which should be pretty simple. Strong is strong. <laughs> I'm sure I don't need to, to write this really, but weak is weak, okay? So if I have a weak acid, it'll be a weak electrolyte, okay? If I have a weak base, it'll be a weak electrolyte. If I have a strong acid, strong, you know, electrolyte, likewise strong base, it's going to be a strong electrolyte, okay? So if it's molecular and you've already ruled out that, you know, it's not, it's not a base, it's not an acid, well, chances are it's probably a non-electrolyte. So basically, if not acid or base, but molecular. Okay, there's a pretty good chart on, uh, on page 310 
that will basically give you a step-by-step hierarchy of, of how you should be looking at this in order to determine if it's going to be a strong or weak electrolyte.